My name is Gil Rind. I'm the Associate Director of Research and Development at Synchron. So Synchron's been around since about 2012 when we first started working as a research group in order to try to develop a device that you can put into the brain and record brain signals uh, through a blood vessel to be used to control a prosthetic device, a wheelchair, a computer, whatever you'd like. So you might think it would be great to, to have a device in me that I can just think and control stuff with my mind, but you know, who, who actually needs one of these types of devices? We've had gamers contact us asking us if we can put a device into them so that they could be able to play faster. Unfortunately, that's not the first application that we're aiming for for this device. We're looking into the medical space, so people that have conditions that would keep them from being able to actually control their arms, their legs, or their ability to communicate. Specifically, looking at people with motor neuron disease, so people that lose the ability to control their arms, legs, or, or speech functions, as well as people with spinal cord injuries and paralysis that, that comes from that, or stroke, or any other kind of condition that would lead to paralysis, quadriplegia, or an inability to get that information from the motor part of the brain out to the rest of the body. So I studied a Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical and Biomedical Engineering at McGill University in Canada. I'm in charge of essentially managing all of the activities that need to happen in order for us to be able to get a device into a patient. Obviously you can't just walk up to a patient and ask them to put a device into them. As much as they might benefit from it, you need to make sure that the device is actually going to do what it needs to do first and that it's going to be safe to be implanted into a patient, particularly for this kind of permanent implant. So I'm managing all of the suppliers that we have in order to manufacture the devices, looking at the prototypes and making sure that they're going to, to be able to interact with the, the different parts well, uh, managing the safety testing that needs to happen in order for the device to be proved that it can actually go inside of somebody safely without causing any harm and that it'll actually be doing what it's supposed to be doing. The work of Synchron is trying to find a way to make brain-computer interface is more accessible to people. So at the moment, the top of the line in that space requires invasive surgery. It's a fairly dangerous procedure and it's difficult to, to translate that from the research community into the actual clinical community and getting it to the patients that truly need it. So what we're trying to do is to bridge a gap between those two and create a device that can still give patients the ability to, to regain their ability to communicate and to, to control their bodies or similar parts to their bodies, um, while trying to make it something that actually is going to be convertible into something that, that a patient can use rather than something that just stays as a research tool. The Stentro device is unique in that there's not really been any kind of other devices that this is following the path of. It follows a bit of the path of a pacemaker, but there are a lot of differences between those. The main issues from a technology or engineering point of view is that we need to miniaturize the device quite significantly in order to be able to fit everything we need in there. From a regulatory aspect, it's a class three medical device, which is the highest risk device because it's a permanent implant in the body. So there's a lot more stuff that needs to be considered for long-term safety of the device as compared to, let's say, a Band-Aid. So there's a lot of different challenges, particularly in making a medical device as complicated as the one that we're making. So, um, for example, this type of device, we can't actually see whether it's going to, to work properly until we can put it into somebody because it's hard to find other willing participants that, uh, that would, would lend their brains for, for us to be able to use. So we have to find creative other means using benchtop testing and preclinical testing in order to be able to, to create a, a way to prove that the device works the way that it's going to, which has been challenging. In addition, making sure that all the timelines of different manufacturers, we've got about six or seven different manufacturers that are all involved with very complicated tasks that they're doing and making sure that they all are working together in order to come to a final product when we need it is a, a very difficult task to, to follow through, particularly in our case since we have a fairly global set of manufacturers that are making devices for us. So it's a lot of phone calls in the middle of the night. So we're a fairly small group as in comparison to a lot of other medical device companies that are out there um, or in comparison to a lot of other startups that are out there. However, at this point we, we have grown a little bit to be able to, to try to capture some of the aspects of a medical device that you might need in order to take it through to a clinical trial. Uh, part of the key core group are a group of engineers and medical professionals. So the, the leader of the, of the group, the CEO of Synchron, is a doctor that's a, a neurointerventional a radiologist. Uh, we have a, a couple of engineers that, that are also leading aspects of the project in terms of creating the design for the device. 
Um, we have people related to quality and legal side of things that are that are lending their input to make sure that the, the device goes where it's going to go, that we can make sure that we can get the patents that we need for the company in order to protect our technology. Um, and in addition, we need a lot of people to, to help to do the actual testing of the devices, and whether that comes from people that are techs in the industry, people that are coming in as interns or students, or we ourselves that are doing the testing. There's, there's usually a lot of stuff that needs to get done in order to make sure the device functions the way that it needs to. So I really enjoy being able to communicate with a large different group of people that have very different abilities and skills in what they bring to the company. Also being able to forge our way into technology that hasn't been developed yet. There's a lot of stumbles along the way which can be a bit frustrating, but at the same time it's exciting to, to be the one that's in front of that group trying to lead the charge into a new technology.